Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be a little bit different than videos that I've done over the past uh, 18 months or so. In this video, I want to put a particular emphasis on people who are brand new to Orbiter. You've just downloaded it, you at least have it installed and working, but you really don't know the first thing about it. You don't know how to get going, you don't know what buttons to push and how to even get into orbit. What I don't want to do is I don't want to just sit here and go down the list of uh, what buttons to push, you know, what F1 does and all of that type of thing. Because I personally feel like videos like that are very boring and they're not that interesting. And the fact of the matter is all of that information is easily available. Maybe you don't know how to find that information. So what you want to do to find out simply what buttons to push is do something that most people hate doing, which is to read. Uh, but don't worry, it's easy. If you go to where Orbiter was installed, wherever you happen to install it, and you go into the doc directory, you'll find a PDF file that lists all of the keystrokes and it, that's very informative it's very useful to have that so you want to open orbiter PDF and if you skip down to uh, chapter 7 which I guess is page uh, 32 then you can see here that without doing a bunch of boring reading you have the whole list of all the different keys to push and what they mean so you might actually if you have a printer you might actually want to print pages uh, 32, 33, and so on. So I'm not going to start out just by sitting here and just going down this list of, you know, what all these different keys do, because you're, uh, if you're able to get Orbiter installed and if you have enough interest in this type of thing, then you, you're obviously you're literate. You can read for yourself. So that's basically, you know, kind of where you want to start. Get, uh, get that. PDF open and read what the different keystrokes do. So here we are, we're sitting on the runway in the standard Delta glider, and we'll take a look at a couple of the different spacecraft that are available. But the Delta glider is especially good for people that are just getting started. But there's one kind of gotcha that I want to point out. If we look here, this is called the glass cockpit view that I have available now. That's where you don't see an instrument panel, but you just see these two black boxes, which are called MFDs. MFD stands for multifunction display. And if we press the F8 key, that's the function key at the top of your keyboard, F8, then we can switch over to this uh, 2D cockpit, 2D panel view. And something that people tend to want to do when they're using this type of craft is they'll notice over here that there's a hover lever and they'll want to do this, which is to raise the hover to full throttle and then they sit here on the ground doing absolutely nothing and they wonder, you know, why isn't the vessel taking off? So let's turn off that hover engine for now, because obviously it's not doing us any good. And I'll just briefly explain why that's not working. The Delta Glider has a hover engine that's powerful, but it's not powerful enough to lift the Delta Glider off the ground when you're sitting here at Earth, when the Delta Glider is fully fueled. And by the way, I got down to this lower part of the panel by using the arrow key. The up down arrow key scrolls that panel up and down. And if we look over here and we see our propellant status, we can see that our main tank is full. It's That's green. That's how much fuel we have. And when this is completely depleted, then obviously we're out of fuel. Now the Delta Glider has a lot of fuel. Uh, this is 23 thousand meters per second worth of capacity and that probably doesn't mean anything to you if you're brand new to orbiter 
but trust me that's a lot of fuel this is a this is a futuristic type of vessel this type of capacity isn't normal for you know like a space shuttle type of thing so the reason that we can't use the hover is because in this configuration the main fuel tank has so much fuel in it that the delta glider is so heavy that it can't lift off vertically now there is one way you can solve that and that would be to exit out of orbiter and you turn off the uh, realistic flight model and by doing that then it basically tells orbiter to ignore physics to some extent and then you could come back in here and even with the main tank completely loaded up you would still be able to use the hover but just to sort of show how this impacts the hover engines what we can do is press uh, control F4 or another way to get there is to press F4 and then go to custom either way you get to the same place I just prefer control F4 because it's a shortcut but if we go to control F4 and go to the scenario editor and the scenario editor by the way has to be enabled in modules and I'll actually cover modules uh, a little bit later but the scenario editor has to be enabled in the modules otherwise you won't see it in this list but I'm going to bring up the scenario editor and I'm going to edit the delta glider propellant just to show this concept of the hover and if we take the fuel you can see the fuel down here going up and down and if I take it back to I'm not actually sure how low it has to be but probably something like that and then if I hit done and I close all that out now when I use the hover engines or try to use the hover engines you'll see that eventually with enough thrust I'm now able to lift up off the ground vertically and the way you can control the uh, hover engines again refer to that PDF file so you know what all the keys do but I'm pressing the zero key on the numeric keypad to add thrust and I'm pressing the period key to remove some thrust but again refer to the PDF you can read what all the keys do on your own so now I'm gonna go ahead and land the Delta glider because I don't really want to take off this way give it a nice gentle touchdown and well it wasn't so gentle but nevertheless we're back on the ground so I'm gonna go back to that scenario editor and give myself all the fuel that I took away fill the tank back up there we go hit done hit done and close and now the Delta glider is once again too heavy to be able to take off vertically it's actually a lot more efficient if you take off this type of craft uh, more like an airplane if you fly it like a runway so uh, or if, if you fly it uh, like an airplane you know down the runway and take off so that's what I'm going to do and I want to show just briefly how to at least get the vessel up into orbit and we won't even worry really about all the buttons and stuff here so on this side I'm actually just gonna shut that off by pressing power and on this side we won't worry about what all this stuff means but for now just press DST so that, that switches from PER APR over to PA APA and don't even worry about what that means it just it doesn't even matter for now and then we'll press PRJ to change that from ECL to SHP and then we'll get going just a quick pre-flight checklist we do want to make sure that surface controls are turned on that's what this stands for over here it says AF control I think it stands for air force or air surface I don't know exactly but you change this by either left clicking or right clicking so currently it says AF controls on but if I left click it will change it to pitch and if I left click again 
it'll turn it off. Now if I left click again, it does nothing. But if I right click, now it goes to pitch. And if I right click again, it goes to control or it goes to on. So that's how these types of knobs work. You either left click them to turn them this way, or you right click them to turn them that way. And we have RCS mode off, and that's actually what we want since we're going to be going down the runway. It may help to pick a different view since we're going to be going down the runway. So instead of having this 2D panel that kind of obstructs our vision, what I can do instead is press F8 to toggle through and find a different view that I like. And I'm going to go with this one. Now, in order to get the vessel moving forward down the runway, of course, one option would be in this 2D panel view. You could drag the control knob forward, but I personally don't like doing that. So instead, we're going to press the plus key on the numeric keypad, which will which will fire the main engines. But, but you'll notice when we do that and then let go, the thrust immediately goes away. So what we actually want to do is press plus and hold it and then tap the control key and that will lock the engines so that they continuously fire without me having to hold the plus key down. Now refer to the uh, PDF to know what the keys do, but as I'm going down the runway I'm just using one and three to keep myself centered on the center line. And once I get up to a couple hundred meters per second, which I can see right here, I'm just going to press 2, which will pitch the vessel back a bit. That will raise the nose, and that will get me pointed up toward the sky. And then I'm going to immediately press G to raise the landing gear. And if we kind of look outside, you can kind of see that animation there with the uh, landing gear retracting. Now, in order to get to orbit, it's ideal, it's preferable, if we have a heading, and this up here is the heading, by the way. Currently, we're heading 340, but you can kind of see this swinging around. We want a heading of about 90 degrees, and again, this is just for our initial uh, demonstration type of orbit. We're not going to the ISS, and we're not doing... You know, we're not planning on going to a planet or the moon or anything like that. We're just, for this first flight, trying to get ourselves into orbit. So we would like to have a heading of 90 degrees for, for getting into orbit here on this first try. And the way that we do that is just by rolling the vessel a bit to the right. And we just watch our heading indicator here as it comes around and gets closer to 90. So I'm just kind of, uh, and you don't have to hold the number six, by the way, you just put in a little bit of roll and it'll hold itself in that position. And you'll see the vessels kind of bobbing up and down. That's just because I'm pressing a bit of two here and there to keep the nose up above the horizon. This center line here indicates where uh, the, the, the indicates where level is at and if this velocity vector, this bullseye looking thing, drops below that line then it means I'm actually going down and I don't want that because obviously I want to get into orbit so there we are, we're at 90 degrees, I actually overshot it a little bit because I was talking but once we're at 90 we just want to level back out and this is close enough, we don't have to be perfect you know it could be 80, 100, whatever again this is just our demonstration flight and you can see that over here we're already at 1.5 kilometers in altitude, but we're only at 315 meters per second. Now, in order to get into orbit, obviously we need to be higher than this. So let's pitch up, and we can pitch up again just by pressing two, or if you've got a, a joystick and you've got it set up, you can pull back on the joystick and that will obviously raise the nose. You don't wanna make the mistake of uh, just pointing straight to the sky, like just putting the vessel up on its tail and heading straight up. That's actually not how you get into orbit, believe it or not. 
So we just kind of want to go to a pitch here of, you know, 40, 50 degrees. I, I think 40 is pretty good. And you can see the vessel's already wanting to settle back down on its own. And we don't need to fight it. Uh, there's no need to constantly make adjustments. Just, uh, you know, just let it sort of naturally... It, it kind of wants to pitch down. And the reason it wants to pitch down is because as we get higher in the sky, the air becomes thinner. You know, the air up here, the atmosphere isn't as thick as it is when you're down at sea level. So as a result of that, the vessel can't generate as much lift, so therefore it kind of wants to settle down so that it's flying more straight and level, and that's fine, that's, just let that happen. Now, in order to get a proper orbit, we're really looking more toward getting up to a, a velocity that will allow us to be in a perpetual free fall around the Earth. That's actually more important than the altitude. The altitude does have to be high enough that we're out of the atmosphere, but I think some people, when they're brand new to the idea of orbits and they're brand new to just concepts of space in general, they have this misunderstanding of what it means to be in space, or what it means to be in orbit. I think that people almost think that the astronauts, uh, you know, aboard the ISS or in the space shuttle, they just, they launch, uh, they see the space shuttle go up, and they just have this idea that the shuttle goes up in the sky, and it reaches a certain point, and then there's like no more gravity, and they're just floating up there you know, above the clouds, above the atmosphere, and they're just hanging there because there's no gravity. But that's actually not what's happening. What's really happening is that they're actually going around the Earth very fast, over 17,000 miles per hour. So they're, they're moving, there is definitely gravity, but the, but the uh, gravitational influence that they experience is perfectly counterbalanced by the velocity that they're going around the planet. And those two balancing forces cause zero G. So it's actually incorrect to say there's no gravity. It's more correct to say they're just not experiencing any G, uh, G force. But we won't worry about those technicalities. What all we need to do to get into orbit is just keep our vessel, uh, you know, flying forward. We're slowly getting up through the sky, which is fine and we're slowly increasing our velocity. If we get impatient, something we can do, and I don't recommend that you do this very much, I do recommend that you exercise patience, but if you press T on the keyboard, that will accelerate time forward by a factor of 10, and if we press R, we go back to real time. The reason I don't recommend that you do much of this is because when you press T to warp time forward, when you're in the atmosphere, you quickly lose control of the vessel. Every key, every input that you put into the keyboard when you're doing time warp is greatly amplified. So if I'm warping time forward and then I see that my vessel is starting to pitch down and I want to pitch up, but I'm still at a factor of 10, I'll show you what'll happen. So let's go ahead and warp time forward by 10. Now I can see, oh no, I need to raise the nose, so I'm going to tap 2. And you can see that. See how much it bobbles. That's because when you're under time warp, all your inputs are also multiplied by a factor of 10. So normally when I'm at real time like I am now, and I put in just a little bit of 2 to raise the nose by just a little bit, that's, that's all it's doing. It's just raising it a little bit. But when I warp time forward at a factor of 10, and I press 2 to raise the nose a little bit, it's actually raising it times 10. So it's not real practical to, to put in a lot of uh, keyboard controls while you're doing time warp. But what you can do, once you have the vessel in a position where it's fairly stable, 
you can press T, warp time forward a little bit, and then now that I see that this is coming down, I'll come back out of time warp and raise the nose a little bit. And once the nose is up and I'm happy and I'm climbing a bit again, then if I want, I can put in a little more time warp. But we're actually close enough now to the point where we're going to be at orbital velocity that we would really be better off just foregoing, you know, forgetting all time warp at this point. Notice here that I'm only at 52 kilometers in altitude. You know, I'm not just, and, and notice also that I haven't been pointing straight up at the sky the whole time. I've mostly been pointing straight forward. Because as I said, getting to orbit has a lot more to do with just getting to the proper velocity than it does getting, you know, really, really high in the sky. Uh, we actually do want to climb a little bit more. We're only at 54 kilometers. We would like to be, you know, at least 65 or so kilometers. Uh, but mainly, uh, we just want to keep an eye on that, on this over here, our orbital, or our velocity. And once that reaches about 7,500 meters per second, or 7.500 K, then we will be at uh, orbital velocity. And something that I haven't said anything about yet, simply because it hasn't been necessary, is this box here. What does all this mean? Well, you might be able to figure out just by looking at what's been happening that this gray outline here, this is the surface of the Earth, and this green outline, this is our trajectory. This is what the computer thinks our trajectory is going to be around the Earth. And you can see currently it's not quite completely around the Earth yet, which means we're not in orbit yet. We are not fast enough to have a green circle that completely goes around the Earth, but it's getting ever closer. We're almost there. We're at 7,200, almost 7,300, and we're just a, a little bit away. Let's actually kill the engines now, in fact. And the way you kill the engines quickly refer to your you know your documentation here again spacecraft controls tells you right here to kill the main engines you just press the uh, asterisk key which is what I did and you'll notice that this green outline is almost completely wrapped around the earth but it's not quite in order to have a proper orbit that's uh, actually what we need is we need to have this green outline completely wrapped around the Earth. So what we can do now to finalize our orbit is we can actually just add one bit of main engine. So instead of pressing the control or instead of pressing the plus key and holding it, we'll press control and hold it and we'll just tap the plus key one time and you can see that that just gives us a little tiny bit of thrust. So instead of adding in a ton of thrust, I'm adding in just a little bit more thrust. And that will let me control how quickly this last little bit of the orbit takes place. Because let me show you what happens if you don't control the last little bit of your orbit. Let's go ahead and go back to the full power of the main engines. And now we're basically where we would like to be. But if you're not paying attention, then this is what tends to happen. Is your orbit now is completely wrapped around the Earth, but it just starts growing out of control because maybe you're looking at your altitude, or maybe you're over here looking at map MFD, or whatever, your eyes aren't where they need to be. And then when you look over here, you're like, oh, my orbit's all screwed up. So then you hit the asterisk key to kill your engines. And when you look down, You've got this big arc that comes out here way out into space, much farther than is necessary. We can always fix this later, but ideally you would like to arrive in orbit with an APA. That's the highest point of your orbit. We won't even worry about the technicalities there, but you would like to arrive in orbit with the high point of about 200 kilometers. Okay, so that's just a very basic quick look at 
getting the Delta Glider into orbit uh, per this method. Let's take a look at a different vessel. Just give me one second to find it. There it is. One of the ways that you can find, uh, well, the way that you can find different vessels that it might be available in your scenario is by pressing the F3 key, which is what I did, and that lets you select different spacecraft. We were in the Delta Glider, that's this one, which we now have in something resembling an orbit. Uh, I don't care about this craft as far as I'm concerned. It can go ahead and crash now. But what I want to do is take a look at one of the other spacecrafts so that we can look at a completely different way of getting into orbit. That's not completely different, but it's a little bit different. Notice this craft doesn't have any wings. So what do we do for this one? You know, do we just uh, run it forward and have it skid across the pad? Because notice it doesn't even have any wheels, so it's not like it can roll forward. These types of crafts work on the same principle, but to get started, instead of going full power on the main engines to move forward, the only thing that we have to do differently for this type of craft is to use the hover engines to get it up off the ground. And this craft is configured, you know, its weight, its, uh, its engine thrust and all of that is configured so that it can hover up off the ground even though it's fuel tanks are completely full. And by the way, when you press F8 to go from this view to the 2D cockpit view, you'll notice that the 2D panel is very different looking. Each type of craft can have its own 2D panel. They're not all going to look the same. Uh, but if we press like control up or control down, we can kind of move around the different panels. And in this one, we can see that you know, the, tw the tanks are full. But if we want to get this one up into orbit, just so we can see a bit of a different way of doing it, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the hover engines are set in the hover position, which they're currently not. Currently, the, uh, these engines here are facing forward. So if we were to try to use these engines, they would actually uh, will tend to push the vessel backwards. So if we come to, there's three positions here, forward, hover, and retro. So I'm going to click here for hover. And you'll notice the engines start to turn. In fact, if you listen carefully, you can hear that sound. And now the engines are facing down. And this indicator here shows you which direction they're facing. So if we were to say forward, we can see them turning this way, and we can also see that dial indicating which way the engines are going. But if we want to get this vessel, this type of vessel, into orbit, then we need to have the hover engines facing down so that we can uh, lift the vessel up off the ground. Now we just engage the hover engines as explained before. We could either lift this lever to the uh, top here, you know, raise it up. But again, I prefer the keyboard controls. I think they're, I think it's just a little bit easier to use the keyboard controls. So we're going to press zero on the numeric key pad. And you'll notice that this lever is indicating that it's, you know, going up. So I'll press zero again and again and again. And it's going to take a little bit more than an idle amount of hover thrust to lift this up. So let's just press zero several times until it starts to uh, raise itself. There it goes. Uh, we don't necessarily need to go all the way to the top because that's just going to raise our altitude super fast and we don't necessarily need that. We just need to... We just need enough hover to kind of get up off the ground. So now we're hovering, but what do we do in order to get to orbit? Well, it's actually the same principle. We want to have our heading 
be about 90 degrees if we if we're not going to the ISS or if we're not planning any special type of orbit. And the way we adjust our heading here, since we're not going to bank, you know, like we were flying before, Translation. is we compress the uh, slash key, uh, the backspace key, it's actually the forward slash key, on the numeric keypad, just toggle between translation and rotation, and just listen for it. Rotation. You heard it say rotation. If I press it again, translation. it says translation. The one that I want is rotation. Rotation. So I'm just going to press that key till I hear it say rotation. Now the way that we change our heading in this vessel is by yaw. That's the uh, that's kind of where we rotate the vessel on its axis this way. And I can do that with one and three. One will yaw the vessel to the left, which kind of makes sense because the one is on the left. And if I press three, it will yaw it to the right. And since I want a heading of 90 degrees, then I want to press 3 to yaw the vessel to the right. And once it's at 90 degrees, or really close to it, then I'm going to press uh, 5, which will kill the rotation. And there we are. And by the way, these landing skids, if we press G, it will kind of raise them up. It's just sort of a cosmetic detail that we don't need to worry a lot about, but it will make things slightly more uh, efficient in terms of aerodynamics. So now we're facing 90 degrees, and we still have the hover engines on, so we're still going up. So getting into orbit at this point becomes a simple matter of doing basically what we did before with the Delta Glider. I'm going to press the plus key, and then press control one time that will lock the engines that's the big powerful engines back here they're now firing and we're now moving forward you can see our velocity increasing once we get underway moving forward we don't really need these hover engines going anymore so we can press uh, the period key on the numeric keypad a couple times to start eliminating that hover thrust because we just really don't need it once we get moving forward. The only thing you want to watch is that, as a matter of fact, you can eliminate all the hover. But as you're moving forward and you're starting to notice this velocity vector drop, you will want to press 2 a couple times to start pitching the vessel so that it's uh, you know pitching up toward the sky a bit. And we could probably use a little more hover, because you'll notice that the velocity vector, that's this bullseye thing, it's actually dropping below the line. That's because I'm still pretty low in the atmosphere. In fact, I'm way too low in the atmosphere for this much velocity. So I'm going to go ahead and add quite a bit of hover at this point, just to give myself a little bit more of an altitude boost. I didn't realize I was gaining velocity so quickly. So we really want to be up you know 25 plus kilometers at this point and then we can just then we can just rely on the uh, rotation thrusters to pitch our vessel upwards so let's get a little higher in the sky and if we look down here we'll just notice that the same type of thing is happening we have the gray circle which is the outline of the earth and we're just waiting for our green line to wrap around and that won't happen until our velocity is about 7.500k now we're up plenty high enough we can eliminate all of that hover thrust and we can go back to just relying on rotation. Uh, rotating the vessel up or down as needed in order to make sure that that velocity vector does not drop below the horizon. And we'll just go ahead and bring the vessel down to the point where it's basically level because we're, we've got the altitude that we need. We're at 
62 kilometers, so we're not going to have any problem at all getting up above that 65, 70 kilometer point. And that, that number basically is just where the atmosphere starts to become so thin that you're not getting any, um, you know, you're not getting any heat build up at that point. But if we press F1, we can kind of take a look outside and see what's happening. You can see this vessel is on its way to uh, orbital velocity just like the Delta Glider was. And we can keep an eye here on orbit MFD. And again, if we would like to, if we were impatient, uh, we can tap T to maybe warp time forward just a little bit, speed the process up. Again, I don't really recommend uh, too much time warp. It's just when you're impatient, things in orbiter just don't tend to go very well. Go ahead and just speed this up for the sake of the video. And here we notice that our APA is over 200. So let's actually press asterisk to kill the main engines because if we don't, then what will happen is like I showed in the Delta Glider when you're not paying attention to uh, your orbit. Let's switch over to this view. Then the other side just kind of tends to grow out of control. In order to get a nice circular orbit, once you have your APA up above 200 kilometers, what you really want to do is go to a certain point in your orbit that allows you to balance things out nicely. And I've been trying to avoid technical terms as much as possible up to this point, but I do need to introduce one. And that technical term is apoapsis. And you can look it up on Wikipedia if you really want to read more about what that means. But essentially, apoapsis just simply means the highest point of your orbit. Uh, if you think of, you know, a hill, going up a hill and then going back down a hill, as you're climbing the hill, you're getting closer to the top of the hill. Once you reach the top of the hill, you've reached apoapsis for that hill. You're at the highest point of the hill, and then of course you'll go back down. Our orbit here is kind of the same thing. We're going up a hill. Notice we're climbing, and once we reach this point, we are at the highest point of our orbit. We're at the, we're at the top of the hill, and then we're going to go back down. Left unchecked, if we don't do anything, then once we reach the top of the hill, we're actually going to go back down and crash into the Earth at this point. Actually, when we get about over here, we'll get into the dense atmosphere and we'll burn up. But we would actually crash physically into the ground at this point if we didn't do anything to uh, fix our orbit. Now, it, it, it turns out that it's best to adjust your orbit at the high point and at the low point. But we won't have an opportunity to get to the low point because uh, on our current trajectory, we're going to crash into the ground if we don't do something about our orbit. So what we want to do is once we get to this highest point of our orbit, we want to add a little bit more velocity, which will actually raise the opposite side of the orbit. Kind of everything that you do on one side of your orbit affects the other side. And currently we're not at the highest point, so we don't really want to affect this part of our orbit. We want to affect this part of our orbit because we want to raise it out here so that it's above the surface of the Earth. The way that we can get over to this point quickly without waiting is to uh, use that T that I told you about to warp time forward. But if we don't know how long it takes to get from here to there, then we might warp time forward too long. You know, we might put in too much time acceleration and we might go past that point. The way that we know how close we are to this point without just looking at this is by reading this number here. That's APT, and what that actually stands for is time to the apoapsis. So we are 360 seconds away 
from this point. And if you do a little bit of math there, that's six minutes. But at a factor of t, you know, a factor of 10, we will get there much faster. So if we watch this number now, we're at 10x. For every one second of your life that's going by, 10 seconds is going by in the simulation. And we can actually press T a couple of times, but we don't want to do that because we're really close to this number and we don't want to blow past it. As we're getting relatively close to this point, which we are now, we're only 90 seconds away, we want to go back to real time and we want to press this button here, which is prograde. And don't even worry about what that means. Just press prograde and you'll notice that it automatically aligns the vessel into a certain orientation. And the orientation that it's aligning toward is our direction of flight. But that's as technical as we'll get into that for now. And once you're getting up to the highest point of your orbit, you don't want to wait until you're all the way there. Maybe uh, as much as 40 seconds or so, which is about now, you can start engaging the main engines. And you don't necessarily want to go and just press the plus key and hold it. But instead, we'll press control and we'll start tapping the main engine a little bit. And we're just going to start raising the other side of our orbit. And notice that I'm not maxed out. I just have a little bit of a percentage of the engine. And the way that I personally uh, judge how much engine thrust to give it is based on the time to the apoapsis. I can see that that's still counting down. And as long as it's counting down, then I know that I'm not, I know that I don't have too much engine. Let me put in some more engine thrust. And you can see that that's now counting up. That tells me that I've got too much engine thrust. So I'm going to back off a little bit, back off a little bit more, back off quite a bit more because it's still counting up. You can see now it's counting down again. And I've just got a slight amount of engine thrust there, but it's still counting down. And that's kind of what you want. And you'll notice the other side of the orbit's coming up. So we have our apoapsis. That's the highest point. That's the top of the hill. That's where we're at right now. That's 269. Let's just call it 270 kilometers and the other side of the orbit is slowly catching up. And one other thing that we can look at is this eccentricity. Uh, eccentricity is how elliptical the orbit is. This is actually uh, best when it's 0 0.0000. It's a perfectly circular orbit. But we don't need to worry necessarily about that as much as just watching the uh, PEA, the low point of the orbit. That's the opposite side, it's over there, and you can see it's slowly catching up to the highest point. So I can maybe add in a little more engine thrust, because our time to apoapsis is, uh, it's now, you know, we've passed the high point, and we're almost circular. And that's pretty good right there. Um, without getting your timings exactly perfect, you'll never get... 100% um, perfectly circular orbit until your timings are really good. And when you get a perfectly circular orbit again, that will be an eccentricity of 0 0.0000. Okay, I'm going to actually say that that is a good enough look at the basics of Orbiter. I don't want to get too much into it in one video because it's just, you know, information overload. But the main thing I want to draw your attention to is that PDF file that tells you what all the different keystrokes do. This way you don't have to just constantly think, well, how do I do this? Or, you know, what button do I press for that? Uh, it's all right here in the documentation. And by the way, this whole documentation, this whole Orbiter PDF is written really well. Even though most people hate to read doc files, this one's actually written well enough that it's uh, quite useful to read, but at the very, very least, come to the section about the keyboard controls, and if you have a printer, uh, just print pages 32, 33, 34, whatever it is for these keyboard controls. Now, in um, 
upcoming videos, we'll take a look at how to, you know, get to the moon, how to rendezvous with the ISS, and then we'll spend more time also on getting into proper orbits and things like that. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment down below, and I will see you in the next video.